Hi guys, my name is Lim. I'm an enthusiast when it comes to displays, speakers, headphones, movies and gaming. Today we will check the Dell S2716DG. Already around two years on the market, we want to check if he's still a good choice if you want a Quad HD 16x9 G-Sync monitor with a TN panel and a refresh rate of 144Hz. We also will check what's the minor difference between an IPS panel and which one might be the best for you. Over the last two years the Dell became a very popular monitor with a very positive response by consumers on several online stores, as same as various reviewers. But is he still the king? <clears throat> and why does he have such a good rating? We will check. If you aim to buy a TN panel, direct competitors and alternatives with close to the same specs are the Asus PG278QR with G-Sync, the Acer Predator XB271HUA also with G-Sync, the Asus MG278Q with FreeSync and the AOC AG271QX also with G-Sync. If you aim to buy an IPS panel, you should check the video description. Back to the S2716DG. Dell is using a TN panel from the Taiwan manufacturer AU Optronics, which is actually known for a lot of high refresh rate panels. It's a Quad HD panel with 77% more pixels than Full HD, a 27 inch panel with a PPI of 108 and also available in 24 inch with a PPI of 122. This monitor has a 144Hz refresh rate panel with a true 8-bit panel which has a color depth of 16.7 million colors, a grey to grey response time of 1 millisecond, a brightness peak of 350, a contrast ratio of 1000 to 1, built-in G-Sync with a range of 30 to 144Hz, it's visa compatible and has a sRGB color space of 97% without calibration. The S2716DG costs actually in the US $530 and in Germany €580. Euros. The ASUS PG278QR costs uh, in the US $640 and in Germany €650, Euros, just for direct comparison. Beside the monitor itself, Dell includes a power cable, a short guide, a display port cable, a USB 3.0 cable, as well as a support CD. From the physical standpoint, Dell designed the 2716 for users that prefer a clean monitor without aggressive gaming aspects such as LEDs or futuristic designs on their desk. Overall, the processing of the 2716 is also very good. We cannot hear any cracks while adjusting the monitor. The extremely thin bezels make the monitor look very expensive and gives you a huge advantage if you plan to buy a triple monitor setup. One thing I found on the upper bezel is that there is a small gap between the panel and the frame. It's nearly impossible to clean up the dust from it. But to be fair, I have to say I only can see this when directly holding a lamp on the frame. The backside of the monitor is black glossy plastic, which I like, but it's also personal preference. The foot stand of the 2716 is great. While we have also a very clean design in it, the bottom comes in an entrusted half mud plastic and the stand itself in a pure black. You can adjust the monitor in nearly every direction. Height, tilt, swivel and pivot. The foot stand also supports a cable management, which uh, just helps you to make your desk a bit cleaner. Overall Dell brings a sturdy and a great looking foot stand. We have one HDMI 1.4 and one DisplayPort 1.2 input, as well as a line-out port where you can plug in your speakers with a 3.5mm cable. Moreover, you have two USB 3.0 inputs on the back, plus two extra USB 3.0 inputs on the left side of the monitor. Below you can also plug in your headphones, which you can control over the OSD. The surface coating has a huge influence on the visual sharpness, on the contrast, as well as on the extraneous light, such as lamps or windows. A matte coating makes the screen in sharpness and contrast more worse. In return, it makes the monitor less sensitive to extraneous light. The Dell has a half matte panel coating. It's more matte in comparison to an Asus PG279Q and more glossy in comparison to a PG278QR. Today most manufacturers use a joystick to navigate through the OSD. 
The 2716 already is two years old, so it's okay that he uses four physical buttons on the bottom right side of the monitor frame, as well as a power button. While clicking on one of these four buttons, the quick menu display pops out. The first few menu points where you can adjust the volume and choose one of the four available presets, standard, warm, cool or user, can be personalized within two more options. You can choose between the preset mode, the brightness and contrast settings, the input source or the volume. In the main menu we don't have that much settings as we would wish. Next to the brightness and contrast control you can choose your input source. Moreover you can set your custom color with the RGB controller. The next important setting is the ULMB mode, while the overdrive function from Dell isn't really good and puts a lot of artifacts in moving objects. That's all about to say to the Dell OSD, while ASUS is making it much better with more control like Gamma Control, Black Equalizer, more presets, a better navigation and more gaming features. Within a grayscale test picture we can see how fluidly this panel shows gradings in different color brightnesses. While using an 8-bit panel from AU Optronics, we shouldn't see any big hard grades. At the 2716, especially in darker colors, we can see clearly color bending which changes a gray into a pinkish, yellowish or greenish gray. Also noticeable are the hard grades which look like stairs. In games, you won't notice this issue that much. But you have to consider it's a pretty bad idea to work on graphics with this monitor. Even with calibration and other presets, I couldn't notice any differences. You have to notice that this is a, an issue that can vary in each monitor. If we take a look on the black level, it's nothing special here. Other monitors handle the black level of a TN panel a bit better than Dell on this model. Even my old Asus VG278 HETN monitor shows subjective no difference in blacks. For example, the Asus PG27QR has a bit better blacks than the Dell. Even the Asus 240Hz PG258Q has easy, noticeable better blacks than the PG27QR and much better uniformity. Remember, if you play in bright rooms with lamps or daylight, you will not really see a difference in black level. Switching to the uniformity of the display, we also can see I have some issues with a lot of clouding in form of strips which looks like banning. And the same bad thing here on the Dell. My old Asus had less clouding, but more backlight bleed. I used the Spider 5 Elite Plus to measure the backlight uniformity of the 2716. In a perfect world the display doesn't show any fluctuations in the monitor illumination. While a maximum of 50% difference in homogeneity is average, the Dell has a deviation of maximum 11% on a brightness of 120 with a white point of 6500 Kelvin. I also tested the white point homogeneity which shows deviations in Delta E. Delta E is the difference or distance between two colors in a metric, while a distance of a maximum of 1.0 is very good and mostly only on very good calibrated monitors. While in everything above 2.0 you can see a difference in the color and from 4.0 to 5.0 the colors even look like other colors. In my test on the upper right corner I had a delta E value of 2.7, which isn't really the best. But as long as you're not a professional graphic designer you will not notice any huge differences while gaming. While TN panels suffer under really bad viewing angles and I read a lot of improvements in newer Quad HD TN panels, I really was curious to test this by myself. Viewing angles are really better, but not that much like I would wish. It's just a small improvement. Especially with darker image content you still have bad experience viewing angles on the top side. This is where I recommend not to put the monitor on an extra monitor desk. If you adjust the height to the minimum level, the viewing angles for gaming are very good for me. And the improvements here I like to take with. Especially for higher resolution monitors, it's important to take a look on the interpolation skills of the monitor. Whatever the reason you don't want to use the native resolution, for example streaming on Twitch with Quad HD, because I read a lot about issues when encoding only in 7020p. Some people still prefer play CSGO in lower resolution, or maybe your graphics card isn't strong enough for a special game and you want to play in full HD. I don't recommend that much, because everything on the monitor will look blurred. The more away from the native resolution, the more blurry your screen will be. 
as you can see here on the test screen, a native Full HD monitor is much sharper than a Quad HD monitor on Full HD. If you take a look on a game and watching the detail on Quad HD, we will notice much blurriness while switching back to Full HD. Colors are very hyped on today's Quad HD TN 8-bit panels, as on the Dell 2716. So is there still a big difference between an IPS panel and a TN panel with 90-70% sRGB color space? While only a color space does not describe how accurate colors are, IPS in general is more accurate and have less deviations than Delta E, which again describes the distance or difference between two colors. For games, this isn't a big issue. Moreover, colors don't suffer from TN viewing angles so that the contrast has more stability. You can notice the advantage of IPS colors if you use an IPS panel for several days and then switch back to NTN. Especially on uncalibrated monitors, you will notice that the colors are still more milky. After I used an IPS panel and switched to my old ACES with the sRGB color space of 99%, I also noticed the difference. In direct comparison, there is only a very, very slightly difference. In comparison to the ASUS PG279Q or the ASUS PG278Q, the ASUS models have a green tilt. You can remove this green tilt by removing some reds and greens in the color calibration. But then the white point from 6500 Kelvin will suffer. Again, this is not a big issue for games not having accurate colors. Where the Dell really can shine is at moving objects. On a TN you still have the best image clarity while running through Witcher 3 or just moving around in games. Especially with ULMB the UFO from the UFO test is crystal clear with a very slightly ghosting or crosstalk. The overdrive function from Dell is not recommended while creating a lot of artifacts. Here you also have to notice that the ghosting behavior depends on which position you look at. Because on the top part of the monitor you will have the most crosstalk on every monitor as you can see on this picture. The difference to an IPS in this case is you will have a bit more blurry while moving in games or even moving objects on desktop. Still it's hard to see a big difference while gaming. Actually I cannot measure the contrast while I'm saving money for expensive measuring hardware. While blacks are close to the same as on my old Asus VG278 HE, the contrast is a little better because the Dell is clearly brighter on the same brightness after calibration. So what's the minor differences to an IPS panel for gaming? While we already talked about the colors, the second thing is that the contrast and the blacks of an IPS panel are also better, what makes colors in darker game scenes pop out and more vibrant. If you play games in bright room with lamps or playing at daylight, you just see a very small difference in blacks. Next to the IPS glow. While TN panels often have to handle with clouding, IPS panels suffer from IPS glow and often from backlight bleed. I already had some different IPS panels and the IPS glow is still more noticeable than some clouding issues on the TN. While playing dark games in a dark room, you have to sit in front of the IPS panel, otherwise the glow will blow you away. You can handle the IPS glow while using lamps, increase the distance between you and the monitor or set the backlight to around 90 and 120 candela, which hides the most of the IPS glow in darker rooms. The next difference is the response time. While having a sharper image and less blur on a TN panel on moving objects, an IPS panel have a bit more blurriness. While ULMB mode on, you will have also more ghosting on an IPS panel. I think it's pretty hard to see the difference in games. On test images you can see the difference clearly. One more difference is when both panel types are calibrated, for example on Gamma 2.2, a TN panel have more details in blacks. So a TN model will have more details, for example in horror games and dark spots. You also can set the gamma lower on an IPS panel in your graphics card settings to have the same details in dark scenes. Why use graphic card software? Because the PG279Q don't have gamma settings as well as no control with the black equalizer. The presets of the ASUS PG279Q has different gamma settings so that you don't have any problems with details in blacks. The last difference is that a TN panel in general can go brighter than an IPS panel, especially while using ULMB. While a calibrated ASUS PG278Q with a white point of 6500K and Gamma 2.2 can have a brightness of 154.9, 
with an activated QLMB and calibrated PG27Q with IPS with ULMB a maximum of 133 at racing mode, while other modes destroy the color accuracy and differentiation. In my mind, for gaming there is not a huge difference and if you want the most sharp picture while moving and you can't handle the IPS glow, you can go for a TN. Consider that the ASUS PG278Q has a much more matte panel, which makes the PG279Q with an IPS panel a little bit sharper, as well as the Dell. So I really really like the Dell, but actually we have a little little bit better monitor on the market, moreover the price isn't much higher. The ASUS PG278QR, which I will upload the test in few days, have a little bit better blacks, not that much clouding, less color bending, more OSD settings with the disadvantage of a very very matte panel. Consider that clouding and color bending issues can differentiate from model to model. For gaming the settings on the Dell are good but you will be limited at your picture control, while Dell isn't offering enough settings in their OSD menu. This isn't a huge issue when it comes to games. If you want watching movies with perfect settings or do some graphic works on this monitor without an external calibration tool like the Spider 5 Elite Plus, it's just hard to calibrate. Remember, even in movies it's personal preference how you set your gamma and your white point. So why does Dell have such a good rating in different online shops? It's because it's still a fantastic monitor and obviously the superior quality control and support that Dell offers. The only part I'm missing is the gamma control in the OSD, which I can be replaced with software, the black equalizer and the overdrive function without creating artifacts. Even my model wasn't the best in the illumination and color bending, which can differentiate from model to model. After that what I also read, the ASUS has much more problems in quality control and this probably will just result in bad ratings. Visit limbscave.com where you can discuss all about done and upcoming reviews, ask your questions, rate that video, subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. Take a look at the pro and contra list at the end of the video. If you have any questions, criticism or suggestions, just write down below. Thank you guys. चलो चलो अंदर चलो जल्दी आई बंद कर दो मूव 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 लेट्स गो इज इन हियर व्हाट आर यू डूइंग नाउ हैव डन नथिंग रॉन्ग डैम स्पाइस व्हाट नो शट अप इज लाइंग नो गेट द ट्रक मूव इट गो द Look out of here. Go on. Hey, hold on. What's your rush? How do I know you're not smuggling something in here? Arms up. Sir, please, Maggie. It's dangerous to be out so late. Hey. Where do you live? What are you deaf? Answer him. I said, where do you live? Area J. I'm in the middle of something. It can wait. Uh, yes, sir. Meet me inside. Understood. You, with me. Man the gun. Sir, what about her? Just let her through. You heard him. Get going.
the world of men is empty. In the fires of Mount Doom, a ranger and a wraith, bound together in death, crafted the one thing that could challenge Sauron, a ring of power.